I think. Uh, uh, that's that's the one that makes it work. Hello, hello. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah, I was um. <laughs> I woke up at uh, sort of ten o'clock this morning to sit down and watch. Uh, maybe watch one. We'll play some. Um, God, what 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 would I? I watch him probably play some. Um, Oh, I don't know. I think he's going to play some Mountain Blade, some Mountain Blade Warband. Let me just turn that down. Yeah, um, but it, it must have fallen through at the last second because he's gone and played PUBG. And I can't stand PUBG. So I thought, why not load up uh, Cold Waters and play a sort of a mini sort of a challenge, if you like, that I dreamt of last night. Um, the idea is um, there was originally for Cold Waters, and I say originally, a, a little while ago, a mod that increased the amount of murkiness in the water so the water become as became sorry quite dark quite gloomy and very difficult to see through to kind of hamper the fact that you were playing in a, in third person so what i ended up doing was um there's a couple of mechanics in the game that you can abuse to uh, basically uh, get more tactical awareness than you've necessarily earned so the idea of the, what I'm just randomly decide to call the the fog of war, um, or the fog of war challenge that I that I literally dreamt up like last night, um, was that you turn off the ability to look anywhere other than your ship. So you'll note that when we play Cold Waters, we like to toggle the perspective to maybe look at the enemy ship maybe track our torpedo so on and so on um in the cold in the uh, in the, uh, the the fog of war game um we are turning those off in fact i've actually unbound the keys that toggle them just so i don't do it accidentally the other thing is what's called the event camera which means if the if you've basically got a target solution uh, no matter how high, if the enemy launches a torpedo, then the camera flashes over to the target and it shows the torpedo launch as if to say there's a torpedo coming. Um, I don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to disable, which I have to do with an in-game command, I can't disable it normally, um, the, uh, the event camera as well. So yeah, um, basically, yeah. That's uh yeah I I can't I, I don't know I, I PUBG PUBG uh, PUBG is a good game it's obviously doing something right it's been like one of the top games on Steam for however long um, but yeah it just does not tickle my fancy not to play and not to watch um, I was kind of hoping he'd start another Warhammer campaign because uh, he's a I think he's a bit sort of I think he's a wee bit butt hurt that he got steamrolled so quickly he went oh the the game's unfair, kind of thing, and, and he kind of sort of threw his tools down. But that's, that, you know, to each their own. Um, so, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to play um, some Cold Waters. Now, what I did have to do was uninstall the mod which creates, um, which adds all of those extra submarines. Um, I did have to uninstall that because it was causing problems with spawning certain submarines. Um, for example, you'll notice for the longest time, we haven't seen an Oscar-class submarine, one of the really big ones. It's been a hell of a long time, and that's not just because they're rare. Apparently, there's a problem in the in the game at the moment, which means the game can't decide to spawn either the Oscar 1, which is the normal one, or the Oscar 2, which is the modded one. It Because they've both got the same name and basically the same ID, the game can't figure out which one to spawn spawn and therefore it just spawns the charlie because when you play the mission that you bump into the oscar it will either spawn a, an oscar or a charlie one or two um but because there's now two oscars the game just de facto's to the charlie because the ids have changed so yeah that's what we're going to do we're going to uh, play um some cold waters with the vanilla ships i've already got one in mind and uh yeah we're going to uh, see how long we can last in the campaign for nice thing about starting early is we get to finish late as well. So right, let's load up the game. I've uh, waffled on for long enough here. Let's just change the scene for you. Everything seems to be running well on the other stream. I don't expect we'll have too many people sitting in on this stream. I'll be perfectly honest. I suspect it's going to be quite a quiet one. So thank you for turning up. Coined a ting. 
Because, yeah, I, I reckon it's just going to be us and about 100 people or so, because obviously Soviet streaming, Edberg streaming, and it's sort of a, a quiet Thursday morning, uh, not really prime stream time. But, hey, for the, for the 92 or so people that have turned up, excellent. Okay, so we've, we, again, like, we've lost most of our campaigns. I am, at, th at this very time, um, starting yesterday evening, sort of, learning how to play the 1968 ships. Uh, the biggest difference between 1968 and 1984 is that the 1968 campaign is much, much harder by means of equipment. Basically, because the equipment is a bit primitive in the 1968 campaign, it's much harder to play. Like, shooting ships from 8 or 9 kilometers away with dumbfire torpedoes is very tricky. So, it's one of those ones. We'll see how we get on, I think. Right then, so we're going to do an 84 campaign, because I want to bump into some of the more modern uh, Russian ships. And the ship that I want to play, here we go, 1984 save. Well, let's just call it, um, let's call it a uh, fog, fog of war. Just so we know which save it is. There we go, Commander Quebec. Um, I was thinking about playing in the Los Angeles class nuclear attack submarine, but personally, I'm not a fan of the Los Angeles class. Um, it's one of those, it basically isn't very good with the AI in the current state that it is. It's a very good submarine, but it's very difficult to maneuver. Now, it's got incredible, it's got an incredible sonar suite on it. It can pick a silent running ship out of a rainstorm at 20,000 yards. So maybe not that good, but it's an incredibly good sonar system. Um, but it's a massively long ship. And uh, for all that capability, you get a very shallow test depth of only 950 feet, which is not very deep. And um, a, one, a decent running speed of 33 knots. It's not very maneuverable. Um, because it's so large, and yes, it's got the sound dampening, um, like, special, like, it's like a metallic paint, I think it is. It's like a special surfacing. Top secret. Um, but it basically absorbs sound a little bit better, so even though it's got such a wide profile, it still hides very well. It's a very good submarine, and no doubt they're most modern at this time, and most capable. But I don't like it, just because of how big and sort of bulky and, and cumbersome it is. So it's one of those ones. We could play any one of these. Um, the one that I've got in mind is this one, with the, what's called the Permit Class. It's technically the Thresher uh, Class submarine. This is an older one. I think 19, yeah, 1961 they were first introduced. They were in and around sort of the Cold War. Um, they had, uh, if I, I can't actually take you back to the other ones because it's the... Uh, can I? No, not really. Anyway, similar to how we explained with the skipjack on uh, Tuesday's Cold Water stream, this funnel for a towed array uh, is a uh, a different uh, different thing, if you like. It's a, it's a mo it's a post uh, build modification that's made to sort of increase the capabilities of the sub. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of interested in playing in the permit class. I, I'm, I'm also kind of interested to see what ship uh, chat wants. Uh, what do you think we should play? So we've got the Los Angeles class nuclear sub. We've got the Narwhal class, very quiet submarine. Um, we've got the Sturgeon, which is kind of the de facto submarine before the um, Los Angeles came out. And then we've got the Thresher, which was kind of the go-between between, between the Skipjack and the Sturgeon. Um, I don't know why, I, I, I really like this one. It, it just it just feels plucky for some reason. Uh, no, there's no Seawolf Zeth, um, because that was made in the 1990s. It's slightly too late, just too late, uh, for the 1984 campaign. Yeah, we'll just see what people want, uh, what people are interested in, then yeah. Larry says the narwhal sounds the funniest and is therefore the best. Permit or narwhal? I am kind of feeling the permit, to be honest. So, uh, the, the sort of the, the major difference between the permit and the narwhal is that the you'll notice that the narwhal and um, the uh, sturgeon class submarines are, are about the same length, first of all, and they're roughly the same in terms of propulsion and things like that. The actual narwhal submarine was a prototype. I'm sure I've explained this in the past, but it was a prototype using a special type of um, 
sonar suite, or no, it wasn't, a special type of, uh, that was it, circulation or circulatory system for its uh, very quiet nuclear power plant. Obviously a nuclear power plant has to be running all of the time and therefore is constantly generating noise. You can't like just turn it off to go silent because it's a nuclear power plant. So you have to consider that when you're um, using it, basically. So yeah, we could play in a narwhal. Lots of, a few for Permit, a few for Narwhal, Kermit or Narwhal. I think we're going to go with the Permit. We did, we played the uh, the Narwhal a fair bit, um, sort of back in the day. Uh, we played a little bit of the Permit, and we did quite well in the Permit. I like it. Um, it's capable of pulling 28 knots, which isn't the fastest ship in the world, but it's by no means slow either. Um, it's 4,300 tons, which isn't too bad, and it comes with the full NATO uh, inventory of TLAMs, TASMs, Mark 48s, UGMs. It's got the works in there, so it's it's doing pretty well. So, I'll tell you a little bit of a little bit about it. In service since 1961, this class introduced low-frequency sonar and rafting making them orders of magnitude more capable than the earlier SSNs. Originally named the Thresher class, they were renamed after the lead ship, the USS Thresher, sank with all hands during trials in 1963. This was the worst submarine disaster in history at the time. Although quiet by Soviet standards, they are inferior to the more advanced Sturgeon and Los Angeles class submarines. So uh, it's uh, flying, oh, flying, playing the Sturgeon, or oh, sorry, the, uh, the Permit class here is, has the same appeal of playing the skipjack. It's a little bit outdated, which means it's uh, it's more fun to drive. It's it's not it's it's not so reliable that basically nobody can detect you. It needs to be driven with a modicum of care because it is an older sub and isn't necessarily as equipped to deal with modern Soviet sonar um, as maybe it should be. So we're going to play this one. There we go. So. New command assignment. Effective immediately, you are hereby assigned command of the permit class submarine, the USS Tenosa, SSN 606. Congratulations and good luck in your new command. There we go. So we know the story with the uh, the whole Cold War invasion. Best is West is best, and so the Soviets want it. Here we go. So. First things first, we got a, got a we got a, a nice submarine sort of attack mission to uh, to sink our teeth into. Satellite recon has revealed an enemy raider group transiting at high speed towards the Norwegian the North Norwegian coast. Um, we believe a small unrep force is operating in this area. Sorry, it's not a um, a submarine group; it's a surface target, an unrep. Um, you are ordered to interdict this group and sink any replenishment ships in the area. You may also get a chance at the enemy warships this group intends to support, but the tenders and tankers are the mission target. So this, uh, I forget what unrep force is. It's, I think it's a, a something replenishment or something like that, unrep. Um, but it's, yeah, essentially it's for uh, attacking surface vessels. Now, again, interestingly, the interesting thing about surface vessels is that normally what I'd do is to identify a surface vessel. Once I'd got a high enough target solution, I would be able to click F2 and change my camera to that of the ship so we could see what ship we were fighting. In the Fog of War challenge that we've made for it now, that feature is disabled. The only thing I'm going to be able to see is my own ship, which unfortunately means we don't see any of the fancy explosions, but it's it's much better in terms of the continuity of it. So, let us get out to the sea. So we need to get to the North Norwegian coast and intercept. In terms of equipment, we are carrying 12 Mark 48 torpedoes, or sorry, is that 12? Yeah, that's 12, I can count. Three Mark, uh, sorry, mobile submarine simulators and eight UGM missiles. We are gonna unload two of the UGMs and we're going to reload an extra two Mark 48s just so our submarine capabilities are a little bit better. It's going to take five hours in port but that's not too bad. As you can see 28 knots very reasonable for the permit class so we're going to get out. I should also stress because it doesn't say in the actual uh, campaign that the test depth of the permit is about 1300 feet. I think that's our target there just leaving Archangelesque. Archangel Skeven. So they're going to be hugging the coast, and therefore so are we. We're going to go into the barren sea here and intercept. There they are. 
Right. Captain, we have a new sonar contact designated Sierra 1. XO reports that our depth is at 600 feet, heading 033. Speed is 20 knots. Local conditions are stormy with a moderate surface duct. Strong thermal layer at 231 feet. Now, I actually was reading the game's manual uh, just before we come into the game. Um, I was reading about the moderate uh, ducts and uh, thermal layers kind of thing and how deep water affects uh, sound. It's very interesting. Um, if you are in water that is extremely deep, like beyond 10,000 feet, then the, it doesn't really matter how deep you are. Basically, when you're in deep, cold water, um, far, you know, under the, under the surface, its sound is bent back upwards if the depth of the water is about 10,000 or so feet, you know, if the water is really deep, then the sound travels about 20 kilometers out, or 20 kilo yards, and then is bent back upwards and then thrown to the surface, very interestingly. So even if I'm running super quietly at about 20,000 kilo yards away from a target, they may still detect me just because of how water affects sound. That is modelled in the game. The other thing is the surface duct and the thermal layer. Um, the thermal layer acts, if you're below the thermal layer, it acts as a kind of almost a sinking of the sound. So if you're below the thermal layer, rather than sound travelling straight, the cold, the density of the water and the, how cold it is, causes the sound to be bent down. Now, if the water isn't 10,000 feet, then it just reflects into the ocean floor and it creates this sonar blind spot that you can hide in. Equally, if you're above the layer, it's a lot easier to be detected and also a lot easier to detect because if you imagine placing two mirrors against each other, you get that weird infinite mirror effect. Basically, if you create noise above the, the, uh, the surface duct, then the noise reflects from the surface to the surface duct up and down and up and down and it basically bounces up and down and up and down and it becomes trapped in this pocket and that is makes it very easy to detect you at long range. Something I was learning about. Apparently this is all modelled in the game. You'd never get to appreciate it. Um, but it, it is there and it's something we have to consider, which I didn't know about. I knew obviously they did something, but I didn't know what they did. Now I know. Right, we're going to close to about 15,000 yards and rig ship for silent running. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get my periscope up. In fact, we're going to belay that. We're going to close to 20,000 yards. No, do I risk it? an extra fire? Let's play it safer rather than sorry. So we're going to close to 20,000 yards, and we're going to come up to periscope depth, because as I say, the only thing that we can identify with now, like if I want to visually identify a ship, rather than just pressing F2 and having a look at it, I physically need to come up to periscope depth and identify it visually with the periscope. There's no more of this f magic camera stuff. We're, we're cutting it out, so... Close to 20,000 yards. lost contact. Last bearing, one, one, zero. Contact faded. One, one, zero. So that's that way. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to do that, but considering we've done it, Whoops. Okay, well, we'll just shoot a, a weapon on course. <laughs> well, shit. I, I genuinely didn't mean to do that. Never mind. <laughs> We're off to a good start then. So, course one Gun, one. Fire control, we've lost the wire. I'm just going to restart this campaign. <laughs> oh, shit, that was terrible. Oh, my God, we've. <laughs> So, <clears throat> that is probably the worst to start to any Cold Waters campaign I have ever done, ever. That, that was, that is pretty bad. We're just, <clears throat> we're just going to quickly reload that, I think. Yeah, uh, back. <laughs> that was awful. Holy shit, right, fog of war, load. Here we go. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay, uh, even better now, we're at 50 feet. Jesus Christ. Okay, so, same as before, the conditions have actually changed. Um, current sonar contact is still bearing 110, and we're still heading bearing 168. 
but the conditions have changed to uh, clear and there is no surface duct. That was awful. Uh, I apologize. So with the conditions being much less harsh, we're going to definitely go to 20,000 yards. And we're going to go... On our new contact bearing. One, one, zero. Designated Sierra, one. One, one, zero. Let's point the target. Come left to one, one, one. Helm, I. One, one, one. Okay. So let's bring it up to PD then. Yeah, that's it. There, where this is... This has changed here. Four, five feet, die by. Four, five feet. So we're 30 degrees left rudder coming to bearing dive, one, one, four, one. Five feet, die by. So the, the point of this is that we are going to poke the periscope up and try and visually ID our target. There's two of them out there. Let's attempt to identify them before we raise the periscope. So... The solution isn't great. Let's see what we've got that matches this. There's much less sonar contact. Here we go. It could be a Grisha. Looks like a Grisha. Con sonar. Sierra 1 is classified as escort. That's okay. It's not too bad. Let's have a look. Could be a merchant ship. Con helm. Steady course. Looks like it might be a merchant ship of sorts. Looks like it's a Kazbek. Which is an oiler, I believe. Con Let's sonar. take a look. Sierra Two is classified as merchant. It's a very big ship. Okay, that's going to be our priority then. Let's raise let's the scope and let's have a look. So we need to get to bearing one one zero, or roughly that. Aha! There we go. The Casbeck and what is likely a Grisha. So that's the Grisha class warship right there. And there is the Kazbek. We should go for the escort first because we can chase down the other guy. The Grisha is pulling 10 knots which means he's not in ASW mode. So drop scope. Down scope. Let's make our speed no, let's keep our speed as it is. Let's take us down to a depth of 100 feet. Make depth 100 zero, zero feet, die by. The Grisha is turning towards us. It's likely that he got our, our ESM contact. Oh shit, we're getting buzzed by a bear bomber. Not good. Take us down deeper, 200 feet. Make depth 200 zero, zero feet, die by. I don't think that's a bear bomber. Something was just dropped in the water. Unknown what that is. Okay. So we're getting buzzed by hostile aircraft. We're going to transit the layer slowly. Look, it might have been some sort of sonar buoy. He definitely dropped something. Right. Let's fire on this Grisha then before he gets a chance to maneuver away from us. So, firing point procedures bearing 094, range to enable 5,700 yards. Ship ready, tube ready, fire tube 1. God, fire control, we've lost the wire. Lost the wire, aye? So, the wire's instantly broke, so we're going to reload an MOSS in tube 1 just in case shit gets real. We're being buzzed by aircraft, which is interesting. We're going to go down quite deep. 600 feet, please Make dive. Depth six, zero, zero feet, dive by. Getting buzzed again. Dropping something else. Dropping a torpedo in on us. Bring us up to a head two thirds. Make turns for one, zero knots. Maneuvering eye. This is going to come right in on us. Con maneuvering. 30 Making degrees turns. right rudder. Con sonar. Torpedo in the water. Torpedo in the water. Bearing. Two. Four. Four. Okay. We need to come up to a head standard. Make turns for two. Keep the nose zero, down. Zero, Take nine. manual control. Maneuvering eye. There we go. We're going to get underneath it. Con sonar. Lost passing 500 feet. 500 feet, there he goes. Con maneuvering, making turns for two, zero knots. Okay, shift E to disable the event camera, so I've just done that. Yeah, we've just had a torpedo launched at us. Let's bring it up to a head flank. Make 
turns for two. Drop it down to a head standard. We need to launch one, the torpedo. Five, Drop a nine, decoy. Maneuvering eye. Console. Fire the Con decoy into turns for the Grisha. One, Fine point five, procedure nine. zero eight four. Range to enable two thousand seven hundred yards. Ship ready. Tube ready. Fire tube one. Shoot two one. Aye, sir. Okay, bring us back up to a head flank. Make turns for two eight. Not 30 degrees out. right rudder. He's gonna go Con, sonar lost search. contact. Master, one. Last bearing, zero. Nine, one. He's contact is in the baffles. Con, Drop sonar regained contact on. Master, one. Bearing, zero. Nine, Turn zero. Turn weapon. We want it to chase our decoy. He's going to go into a circular search now to try and find Passing us. Passing 500 feet. Con sonar, we are cavitating. We are cavitating. I need to get Passing behind this weapon feet. as best I can. I need it to chase the MOSS. It's not worked. Passing We're being 300 again. feet. Just got confused. Passing 300 feet. We're now behind the weapon. We're getting buzzed again. Con sonar lost contact. There we Master go. one. Last bearing zero. Passing 400 feet. It's now chasing the MOSS. We're being hit by depth charges. Con sonar no longer cavitating. Con sonar lost contact. Master one. Last bearing zero nine zero. Contact breaking up. Okay zero nine zero. Con maneuvering making turns for two eight nine. Passing 600 feet. So I've lost contact with the Kazbek, but I know his last known bearing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reload a missile into Tube 1. Getting buzzed by the bear again. He knows exactly where we are. Hold us steady at 600 feet. Make depth 600 feet, dive by. Con, dive at six zero zero feet, dive by. So the Grisha was destroyed, but the Kazbek was not. There we go. Being depth charged. Got to break contact with this bear bomber. We can't go any deeper. Total water depth is only 700 feet. Okay, turn us on the last known bearing of the Kazbek, please, Helm. Zero, one, zero, two. Come left to one, zero, two. Helm, I. We're also going to need to stay at a head flank, but we're going to need to come up to 200 feet. Make depth we are going zero, to cavitate. Zero feet, dive by. I need to fire my weapon on the last known bearing of the Kazbek. Con, Helm, steady course. Con sonar, we are cavitating. Okay, we're coming up to 200 feet. I know where the Kazbek last was. Hopefully this missile will be able to hunt him down. Okay, dive. Speed, bring us down. Silent bring running for five quiet. knots. Con sonar, no longer cavitating. No longer cavitating. We've got to wait for the water to stop rushing over the uh, the hydrophone and the sonar equipment. It's called water flow. You can see the Grisha going under there. Being buzzed again. He's just going to miss us, hopefully. So we can't reestablish. Con sonar. Con dive at two zero zero feet. Dive by. Just missed us. Okay, so we're going to fire a missile on the last known bearing of the Kazbek. Why is that so? Uh, that's red. Hopefully, this is going to work. Has to be a minimum of 8,000 yards. Failing that, we're going to fire a torpedo at him as well. Firing point procedures 100, range to enable 6,000 yards. Ship ready, tube ready, fire tube 3. Aye, sir. We'll set that to active homing. We shall also sever the weapon from the fire computer. 
so that we can begin evasive maneuvers. Reload an MOSS in tube one and another UGM in tube three. Dive, take us down, please. Take us back down to 600 feet. Make depth six, zero, zero feet, dive high. Helm, take us at maneuvering, sorry, take us ahead two thirds, 10 knots. Make turns for one, zero knots, maneuvering eye. Now again, oh, here we Con go. Con maneuvering, making turns for one, zero knots. This is an accurate bus. Torpedoes come down right behind us. Bring us a head flank. Con sonar, we are cavitating. Weapon is passively homing. 30 degrees right rudder. Con sonar, torpedo in the water, torpedo in the water. Bearing, three, three, five. This we can deal with, it's not the end of the world. Con sonar, lost contact. Master, two, last bearing, one. Zero. We've got a Zero. Decoy. Contact faded. Try and confuse the weapon. Being buzzed again directly in front of us. 30 degrees right rudder. Try and avoid his countermeasures. Did not make a drop there. 30 degrees right rudder. Trying to outturn him. Oh, it's not going to happen. Con sonar, switching to active search. We're going to take a hit. Hopefully it doesn't kill us. No, he's got us. Damn. That's it. Can we abandon ship? Hold breach. We're beyond escape depth. Abandon ship. UGMT-1 torpedo. See, it's very harsh. I like it. Well, shit, I guess we're not playing the permit then. We'll cross that off our list. Fair enough. US blo UK blockaded. The whole war ends before it even began. There we go. Days at war, we sank one. Grisha three. There we go. Thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed that old water live stream. <laughs> that was pretty harsh, to be fair. But again, it's it's good. I like it being that harsh. The game is meant to be that difficult. The, the Soviet Navy isn't meant to be totally helpless. So, we're going to play that again. 1984, and we're going to play the Fog of War campaign. Here we are. Overwrite it. So, what ship do people want to see this time? Clearly the permit isn't quite up for the job. Do we think we should play in something slightly more modern, like a Sturgeon, a Narwhal, or a Los Angeles? Or do you think we should just go back to basics and play a fucking Skipjack? The speedy little bastard that he is. What do we think? Tupelov, yeah, OP. Few people for LA. Plenty of narwhals coming in. Few people want to play the narwhal. The biggest. That'll be the. Uh, that'll be the uh, the LA class for. For brother Bolter there. Quite a few people for the Los Angeles class. Quite a few people for the narwhal. I'd say the LA gets slightly more uh, attention here. So we're going to go with the Los Angeles class attack sub nuclear attack submarine. Uh, this is the largest and most modern so oh, a few more for narwhal. I would say the narwhal. I'm not a big fan of the LA. But yeah, a few people are just uh, I, don't, I I think because I don't play the LA very often, um it's again it's something I don't take out all the time. So maybe we should play it just purely because I don't play it very often. Maybe it will be exactly what we need or maybe it'll be terrible. Who knows? Okay, so we're going to play in the Los Angeles then. Um, we get the same weapon outfit as we did last time. It's slightly longer, has a higher speed, but a bad crush depth of 950 feet. That is not very deep at all. Um, we've got a very good set of sonar equipment, I believe better than the permit. TB-16... Oh, it looks like we get the same sonar suite, but a better radar. Okay, so this is much more modern by standards, um, not the 1961 of the uh, the Thresher class, but in service since 1976, this class was the first to be designed from the outset with a towed array, and the first to return to the 30 plus knot speed of the skipjacks. Originally designed to screen carriers group, carrier groups against Soviet submarines, they combine high speed with excellent digital sonar and fire control, then the most advanced quieting available. With an addition of a harpoon and to with the addition, sorry, of harpoon and tomahawk missiles, these boats are capable against and as capable 
words, against enemy shipping as they are against submarines. Their only drawback is their large size, which makes them very expensive and less maneuverable, and deep diving, than the earlier Sturgeon classes. USS Phelps, that's it. Okay, so, effective comedian... Uh, com it's too early. Um, you are hereby assigned command of the Los Angeles-class submarine the Groton, or the Groton. Groton, Groton, Groton. I think it's the Groton. Um, U.S. Oh, sorry, SSN. Sorry, six nine four. So, the Groton. We know the story. Let's try and take this one out for a spin. Hopefully, this one can survive a direct hit from a torpedo because uh, it's quite a large ship. Ah, here we go, straight away throwing us in by the ankles. Satellite photos show that an enemy carrier task force is preparing to sail from Murmansk. Intelligence estimates estimate, sorry, that it will take a con conservative patrol in the vicinity of the Norwegian Sea, perhaps approaching Narvik, before striking out into the Atlantic. You are ordered to intercept and destroy this task force, especially the aircraft carrier. The enemy escort or service, the escort of enemy surface combatants and attack submarines should be expected. So this is a an interesting one. We're going straight for an aircraft carrier. Brilliant. Groton is a town in uh, north in the Middlesex country, in Massachusetts. Lovely. Right. Let's uh, let's jump in. So let's see what we've got. We've got the standard outfit. We've got plenty of torpedoes, two submarine simulators, and some UGMs. Now, given the size of the ship, I'm going to probably want a couple of extra MOSSs. So that's what we're going to take. We're not going to load up on TASMs or TLAMs for now. We're just going to use the standard um, mini outfit. Land attack missiles, obviously, not being overly helpful at this time, and neither are the TASMs, to be honest. For anybody wondering what TLAM and TASM stands for, TLAM is the Tomahawk missile. Well, they're both Tomahawk missiles, but this stands for Tomahawk Land Attack Missile, and this one stands for Tomahawk Anti-Ship Missile, so you, I'm pretty sure you can imagine what they do. Cool, let us rock and or roll then. Five hours in port, we need to be on the road. You can see how fast we move across the world map with our uh, crazy 33 knot top speed. Which is very good. Can't launch torpedoes at 33 knots, though. So it's on a conservative patrol. We need to find and ID this group. Sailing from Murmansk, supposedly. No visual contact. Hang on. There's a contact here. Unknown, though. The USS Groton SSN 694. Captain, we have a new sonar contact bearing 056, designated as Sierra 1. XO reports that our depth is at 600 feet, heading 137, speed is 20 knots. Local conditions are clear with a moderate breeze, and there is no surface duct or thermal layer. In the odds that we're bumping into the carrier fleet, we're just going to go all hands to battle stations, so we're not going to close to a specific range, we're just going to open, uh, basically open confrontation straight away. Rig ship for ultra quiet. So we're going to immediately rig ship for silent running, which is going to drop us down to a very low speed. Range to the target Con, is so our new 3,000 zero, yards. Seven, five, designated Sierra two. Interesting. We've got at least two Con, Sierras. So at least three. Bearing. This could zero, be the carrier five, group. Five, designated Sierra three. Now I can't press F2 or anything to go and have a Con, look. Con, so our new contact bearing zero, seven, eight, designated Sierra four. So we could have surface ships here, it's difficult to Con, say. Sonar, new contact bearing Sierra 5. Zero, six, five, designated Sierra 5. Looks like we've got some merchant shipping up there. It looks like we've got an Andazan. Con Sonar, Sierra 1 is classified as merchant. I think we're dead already, to be honest. Yep, we've got a torpedo launch from over there. Okay, let's snapshot on this bearing. Fire control, we've lost the wire. Let's snapshot on this bearing. Let's fire a spread of weapons. Shoot two three. Aye, sir. Shoot two two. Aye, sir. Let's have them run shallow with active homing. We're firing a spread. Let's reload an MOSS in tube one. They've obviously got a beat on us. Water depth is only about 500 feet.
incoming weapon. 30 degrees right rudder. Let's keep it quiet. They might not know exactly where we are. Being probed by helicopters. Yeah, they don't know exactly where we are. We've fired a spread at them. Hopefully some of these weapons are going to do their job. Recenter the rudder. Con, sonar, torpedo in the water, torpedo in the you water, found us? bearing, zero, okay. seven, five. We've had one dropped right on top of us. Right, bring us up to a head three. flank, 33 knots. We are cavitating. Might have to disengage and re-engage this carrier group in deeper water. I only hope these torpedoes that are fired find their mark. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra three last bearing zero four five. Contact is in the baffles. Got a wire break. Con sonar torpedo in the water. Torpedo in the water. Bearing zero five one. Not much I could do against this. I'll be honest. I'm getting buzzed by helicopters. This is definitely the carrier fleet. The question is now, will our torpedoes find their mark? Drop a decoy. Go up and turn in on the weapons. Lower the Passing planes. 400 feet. Con sonar regained contact. Passing 300 feet. Our torpedo found us. Passing 200 feet. Then break surface. Full ballast. Passing 100 feet. Knuckle formed. And take us back down. Passing 100 feet. These are ship launched torpedoes or air launched torpedoes. Feet. Which means they are not. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra 2. Last bearing 0. 7. 7. Passing 300 feet. Sank Sierra 2. Sierra 3 is still unknown. Got the decoy. 30 degrees right rudder. Fire an MOSS on the bearing of the fleet bulk. So, firing point procedures. I don't want to fire it at this speed. All back, back emergency. emergency. Con, sonar. Firing no point procedures cavitated. bearing 067, range to enable 15,000 yards. On. Fire. Sierra 3. All ahead Con, front. Sonar. We are cavitating. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra one bearing one three six. Oh, reload an MOSS in tube one. Con sonar lost contact Sierra three last bearing zero four one contact is in the baffles. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra 5. Con sonar. Torpedo in the water. Torpedo in the water. Bearing 0, 9, 4. What I want to do is drop a decoy straight away. Another torpedo. Ship up there still breaking up. Sierra 5 coming in. Getting actively pinged. Drop a decoy. Try and confuse that torpedo. Bring us down a little bit. Got someone closing up there. Two very close range ships at the moment. In fact, you can actually Passing hear the one ship, feet. it's so close. Got an explosion there and an explosion there. They're depth charging around there. Not entirely sure where I am, which is strange considering I'm cavitating. Con, Drop down. No longer cavitating. Speed. Fire a snapshot on the bearing of the Andazan as soon as we slow down. Con sonar regained contact on Sierra. Need to slow four, down to bearing, about 17 zero, knots. Seven, seven. Drop another decoy if we can. No, it's reloading. Okay, snapshot on the bearing of Sierra 1. Fire. Con fire control, we've lost the wire. Lost the wire, aye. That's alright. Reload one, an MOSS five, in tube knock. one. Maneuvering up. Bring us back up to a head flank. Make turns for Con sonar. We are cavitating. Depth charging there. That weapon's just knocked out. Okay. Con sonar. 
No longer cavitating. Rig ship for silent running. Got a torpedo coming right for us. They're steering them in. Okay, Main head flight. turns for three. Con sonar. We are cavitating. Fire another MOSS back on Shoot their fleet. passing 400 feet. Reload MOSS Con in two two. Lost contact. Sierra five. Last bearing zero four six. Contact is in the baffles. This guy's found a target somewhere over here. Hopefully he's not chasing that sinking ship. Con sonar like lost contact. Sierra four. Last bearing zero seven seven. Contact breaking up. Drop a decoy. Weapon countermeasure homing. They're steering the weapon onto target. That weapon is being manually controlled. They're chasing the cavitation. Right. Con, knuckle form. Form a knuckle, try and confuse it. 30 degrees right rudder. Bring us up and over the weapon. Con, torpedo room, tube one ready. 30 degrees left rudder, or right rudder. Con, knuckle formed. Hopefully it gets sucked up on that decoy. No telling for sure. Maneuvering, making turns for three, three knots. You can Con see why I don't like it because in, in Zero, a knife fight, three, three. passing three hundred feet. Has it taken the bait? Go on, take the bait. Looks, it might have taken the bait. It might now be chasing that MOSS. He is. Or at least he's going after a decoy, I think. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra one. Last bearing zero four zero. Contact faded. No, he has got sucked up on the MOSS. Okay, bring us down to Bring silent ship running. for ultra quiet. There we go. In fact, belay that. Just bring us down to five knots. Release ship from silent running. Turn us back on the bearing of the Come fleet. Come left to zero three one. Helm I. Also, passing make three hundred feet. 300 feet, hold at 300. Make depth 300 zero, zero feet, die by. Die by, can't I even? There we go. So two ships have sunk. The rest of the ships are up here somewhere. Now that we're slowing down, we can attempt to identify them again. Sierra 5 is what we're interested in. We're after their carriers. It's not a Kiev. The Moshaf Con, Con Sonar, Sierra. Con, dive at three, zero, zero, zero five feet, is the target. By. And it's trying to get away in a in a in a hurry. Right. We're still being chased by air. Can't identify Sierra 3. Clearly some kind of screening ship. There are too many weapons here. Con, Take us Helm, deeper. Steady core. Make depth four, zero, zero feet, dive by. Speed of the target is unknown. It can make 31 knots though. Looks like it's... Oh, this should be disabled. Uh, never mind, we shouldn't be doing that. Looks like it's uh, taken some damage if I click it. Then yeah, oh, I see. Can't disable that at the very least. So the Moz... Well, what we can confirm with that then is that the Moz has taken some damage. Damn, I shouldn't have done that. See, it's stuff like that that the game shouldn't tell you. We know it's taking on water at least. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. So now we need to track the target. We've just got to wait for this clusterfuck to uh, to cease, basically. Con sonar, noisemaker bearing Have zero you? two two. Take those bits, Doctor Lecter. <laughs> I hope it's to your taste. Thank you very much, mate. This is the reason right here that I don't want to go in and around these these weapons here. This is tracking a target unknown. Looks like this is tracking Con, that there. Room, tube four ready. Con, dive Some kind four, of countermeasures zero, been zero used here. Dive by. They're all getting sucked up on that, which is good. I need to come to the left then. Uh, Helm, bring us left to three four zero. Come left to three four zero. Helm, I. Okay, bring us up to a head standard, please. Maneuvering. Make turns for one five knots. 
Maneuvering eye. There we go, sonar solutions improving. In fact, slow us back down for us. Rig ship for ultra quiet. We're improving our target solution of the guy. Let's just stay on the straight and narrow for now, see how well we can improve it. Target solution is at 70%. We may still be able to engage this guy. He's very far, but he's only able to pull 12 knots. We're going to fire Con, a couple of torpedoes no. at him. Steady course. Okay. With the solution improving, he's not able to get anywhere. He's generating a lot of noise. Con, maneuvering. Making turns for five knots. There are a lot of helicopters in the air. That I know, so I need to stay hidden down deep at 400 feet here. Target solution 77% and improving. Unsure of the Andazan. We fired a snapshot at him. He doesn't seem to have sunk. Unknown, basically. Okay. Weapons are going that way and they're trying to avoid them. Right. I'm pretty comfortable with the solution. It's about to tick over to 95. These Mark 48s are able to chase out at 15,000 yards, so that's pretty good. We're just going to wait for the solution to get to 95% down here. Exactly, it will have anti-missile gear. You don't want to be shooting missiles at it. Okay, we've now got our target. I wonder if that's going to chase the Moskova. Hopefully it does. No, no, okay. We should be so lucky. Right then, firing point procedures on the bearing of Sierra 5. Zero, zero, 001. Range to enable... Let's go zero, zero, 002. Range to enable 8,000... 500 yards. Ship ready, tube ready, fire tubes two. Shoot tube two. Aye, sir. Now we want to keep the wire for these, so we're going to keep it nice and slow. We're also going to fire another weapon, because this one might not be enough to finish it off. So, firing point procedures on the bearing of Sierra 5. Zero, zero, 002. Range to enable 8,200 yards. Ship ready, tube ready, fire tube four. Shoot tube four. Aye, sir. We'll set both weapons to a circular search in the event that they can't find anything. And we'll go... In fact, no, we'll, set, we'll keep them snaking. And we'll set them both to shallow and with active homing warheads. Seems to be some sort of countermeasure just dropped here. Unknown. Sierra 3 is likely around here, then. What's going on on this campaign? It, we are playing a Los Angeles class um, attack submarine, Con sonar. and we Noise are maker, stalking zero, one, one. a Soviet carrier or a Russian carrier fleet. Con sonar, noisemaker bearing zero two eight. Looks like a weapons just got tracked on that target. Unknown if this is the weapon that's tracking him. Looks to be that there is some sort of weapon tracking this guy. Okay, the Moskva, or the Moskva, is uh, changing course, so we need to adjust the uh, uh, RTE points of our weapons. So, bring it down to here. And also change the enable point of weapon 4 to about here. Torpedoes are tracking nicely, weapons 2 and 4 are still running. Here we go. Unsure of the Andazan. Hopefully we're going to see Sierra 3 Con explode sonar, sort of, maker shortly. Bearing zero, two, nine. Uh, you see? That, you see what happened here? That All of their weapons that were chasing me are now chasing him. I fired a, a, basically a dummy uh, torpedo into his fleet. And now the weapons are chasing him instead of me. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra three last bearing zero two eight contact breaking up. We sank him with his own torpedoes. I'm not sure whether it is an Andazan. I, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, we may end up enabling early. Let's drop the enable point down to six thousand four hundred yards. Let's do the same for weapon four. Six thousand four hundred yards. This this will sing the bastard, hopefully. He's taken at least one hit, that much we know. He's only doing 12 knots, he can do a maximum of 31, which means he's in full damage control mode at the moment. He 
he's trying to turn away. He's likely detected the torpedoes coming in on passive sonar. But it ain't going to be enough. You ain't outrunning these bad boys. They've still got 14 minutes of fuel left in them and less than a, a killer yard to go. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing, zero, zero, five. He's deploying countermeasures early. It's not Con, enough. fire control, weapon acquired. He's in big trouble. The sonar, the active warheads, or the uh, homing warheads on these weapons are basically going to cause him a lot of trouble. Weapon 2 has activated and is now chasing Sierra 5. We're going to go with the same with weapon 4 very shortly. It's about to activate. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. Weapon acquired. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing, zero, zero, four. Now, as I say, I'm not manually steering the torpedoes. We're letting the Con, fire, fire control, computer sink the target. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. Weapon acquired. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. Interesting, weapon acquired. Looks like this Andazan has been found by Torpedo 4. We're going to let Torpedo 4 find its mark. Torpedo 4 is now tracking a target. This mobile submarine simulator is outside of its search cone, which means it must have genuinely Con found sonar something. Sonar lost contact. Sierra 5. Last bearing 0. 0. 5. Contact breaking up. A firm. Sierra 4 has found a contact. Interesting. If this is indeed an Andazan, then it should be pulling about 13 knots pulling 11 knots. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's in the right bracket. It's traveling very slowly, considering. And it does match the... S oh, it doesn't match the signature of an Andazan. It's slightly out. Hopefully it's not civilian shipping. Might be civilian shipping. A civil civilian ship... Oh, it's a just a trawler. Con sonar, Sierra 1, is classified as merchant. Steer the weapon away. Oh, shit. I think that's just a merchant ship. Why would a merchant ship be in such close proximity? Okay. We're going to just steer weapon 4 away for a moment. I'm not, ch I can't, I'm not taking, I'm not manually driving the weapons. Right. We need to come up to PD and visually ID this target. Dive, bring us up to four, five feet. Make depth four, five feet, dive, dive. We need to come up and we need to ID this target before we engage it. That could just be a civilian fishing ship. It's marked as friendly. You can see my predicament here. Oh, now it's tracking that. That what's it? I don't want him to track him. He's tracking something. Just leave it, just leave it, just leave it. Why would there be a friendly trawler in such close, close proximity to a Soviet carrier fleet? That's my only thing. Oh, lost contact with weapon four. That was pointing back at me. Did I lose the weapon? There's no way I lost the weapon. Looks like I just lost the wire. Maybe I did lose the weapon. Hard to say for sure. There's the carrier. Right, we need to come up and ID this target. He is at... Con, fire control. Unable to fire. Yep, that's right. Uh, bearing 028 from us. Hopefully there's not a weapon about to come back at us. Maybe it got sucked up on a ship or something. No helicopter contacts. Again, iteration. It is a bearing 028, I believe. 028 from us, according to this. So let's raise Optical. the scope. Oh, there is a helicopter there. Luke, try and ignore him. 028. Con, torpedo room. 2 2 ready. Looks like that looks like a fishing vessel from profile. The problem is, is it a Russian fish fishing vessel? We're going to pull up closer to it. Drop scope. Down scope. Come right to zero, two, three, helm I. Bring us down to three, five, zero feet. Three, five, zero feet, dive by. I want to ID this vessel before I slot it. 
It could be a Soviet fishing boat. It's flying a red flag of sorts. Seems to be that we did lose that torpedo. I can't see any torpedo contacts. The question is, what is a fishing boat doing out here? Do you know what I mean? 850 souls lost. Yeah, I know. That's a big ship we killed. We can actually see this one down here. Well, it's uh, it's not so much an aircraft carrier as it is a heli carrier, but still a very big boat. Con, helm, steady course. We want to intercept him. He's only pulling 11 helm knots. Left two, zero, two, zero. Helm, I. Which means all we need to do is go to like a head standard to catch him. Make turns for one, five knots. Maneuver. Let's go ahead full. Make turns for two, zero knots. Maneuvering eye. Catching Not him should be pretty easy. Making turns for I'm just going to speed up time a little zero bit. Knots. Okay, bring us oh, right 30 degrees yeah. right, runner. Hopefully we don't get caught by this. Uh, Lincoln, Con, thanks sonar. very much. Torpedo in the water. Torpedo in the water. Bearing. Two, six, eight. Okay, we got a torpedo tracking us. Let's bring it up to a head flank. Drop us down Main another 50 four. feet. Three, three. Con sonar. We are cavitating. We're being tracked on sonar. Come left to zero, two, four. Helm, I. Con sonar lost contact. Master one. Last bearing zero. Con helm steady course. It's just right, a fishing boat. Warm. It's not a military target. So we're just going to have to evade this weapon for as long as we can. Come right to zero nine three. Helm I. Coming to zero nine three. Was this the Andazan? No, it wasn't. So we're not sure Con, what Sierra helm, four was. Steady course. Going up to 30 knots now. We're making a hell of a good speed here. Can't quite outrun the torpedo, but we can certainly stretch it out. Bring us down another 50 feet, please Make dive. Depth four, five, zero feet, dive by. How many decoys do we have left? 18, drop another. Oh no, we don't. That's not right. Doesn't tell me how many decoys I've got left. I should have a finite amount, definitely. Being tracked again. Con maneuvering, making turn. Con knuckle formed. Knuckle. Got a turn for this boat. Con knuckle formed. This propeller's moving at a hell of a speed. We can drag this out for a little while, it's not too bad. It's if the helicopter drops another torpedo that it will be interesting. Flick the rudder. Con, knuckle formed. Form a knuckle. Uh, forming a knuckle is a way to confuse a, a homing warhead. Basically you create a very turbulent uh, set of uh, bubbles. like a, Almost like a, a swell in the water using your rudder. And it confuses torpedoes. Con, knuckle formed. There you go, you see that? Give it a flick back. Con, knuckle formed. There we go, and the idea is to run right over this wreck. This one looks definitely to be a merchant ship of some sort. We could have just sank some civilian shipping anyway. This is definitely some kind of merchant ship. Oh, hello. Two explosions back there. Con, knuckle formed. Let's take a look through merchant shipping. Could be that. Could be that. Don't think it's any of those. Looks like it was probably this. 
perhaps to merchant ship. Looks to be that's a warship out there, just by design. Con, knuckle formed. There you go. You don't have to keep them running for very long. Right, bring us down to a head one third. Make turn con sonar, no longer cavitating. Definitely a merchant ship, looks like it was probably one of those. Difficult to say which nation it was, or if in fact it was friendly. Doesn't look to be a hostile warship, it's not painted right. That was a warship, Sierra 2 was a warship, no. Sierra 4 was some kind of... Uh, warship. Sierra 3 was some kind of warship. And obviously the Moskova. Um, we may never find out what the, what the trawler is. I'm almost tempted to now that the mission's over, but we'll let it go. There we go. So, a civilian casualty. Just like that. God, we're very close to it. But, um, well, to be honest... Uh, civilian over, shipping shouldn't five, really be five. allowed in a proximity of a Russian carrier fleet like that um, by any part. So yeah, we, we sank them. It's a shame, but that's how it is. Right, there's aircraft nearby. We need to escape the aircraft. Now let's take it up to a head standard. Make turns for one, five knots. Maneuvering eye. Bring us right bearing one zero zero. Come right to. One, zero, zero, helm, I. We need to try and throw this helicopter Con off our sights. Making turns for one, five knots. Con, helm, steady course. <laughs> so sink one more. Everyone's hell bent on getting me to sink the, uh, <laughs> sink the, uh, the, 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 the fishing ships, yeah. Very good haul there. No eyes on the helicopter, but the game seems to think that the helicopter is nearby, so let's speed up time. Can we bring it up to a head standard? Make turns for two, zero. Oh, nine. this is a head full. It's a head one third, two thirds, standard, full, and flank. That's what uh, one to five is. Water getting shallower? Not really. It's changing a little bit. It's actually getting a little bit deeper. No, the helicopter's still tracking us. We're just on time elapse so that we don't have to wait for ages. Jesus Christ. I'm not going to bump into this, am I? Someone just launched a torpedo against me. There it is. He's not on the right track. I think he's lost us. He thinks that we went up this way. So let's let's prove him wrong. Let's take 30 degrees right. Come right to one, three, four, helm I. And let's head this way. He thinks we've gone up there. Con, helm, steady course. And as a matter of fact, we're moving away from his torpedo. He's gonna lose us very shortly. He doesn't know where we are. So, weapon count at the end, we've got 10 Mark 48s and 2 MOSSs. We dumped a lot then, but that's okay. It's not terrible. It did the job, it sunk the fleet. It's a lot of money, but that's why, that's why we make them. That's why they're built in the first place, so that they can be used. There we go, we've evaded the aircraft. Let's leave combat. So it was a Krivak, a Udloy, and a Moskva. Uh, the Krivak and Udloy are both very good anti-submarine ships, so it was no wonder we were detected so early. Right, after action report. Excellent job, Commander. Your neutralization of this high-priority target will severely reduce the enemy's ability to hinder transatlantic convoys. Uh, since... Sinsland? Sinic... Sink... Sink... Sinkland? 
I don't know how you pronounce that. Sends regards to you and your crew. Stand by for new orders. We get a medal for sinking a priority target. The Secretary of the Navy expresses his heartfelt congratulations and takes great pleasure sorry, in awarding the Bronze Medal Star to Commander Quebec, Commanding Officer of the USS Groton, or Groton, I don't know whether it's Groton or Groton. Groton sounds more like it should be. Uh, SSN 694. Commander Quebec is cited for extraordinary hip blah blah. You've, you've heard it all before. Okay. Cons or sorry, constant convoys. Convoys from North America continue to ferry goods into Western Europe with minimal losses. This has been attributed to the efficient cooperation amongst NATO naval forces. The convoy system worked in World War One and World War Two, and it still works today, a spokesperson for NATO naval operations has said. Meanwhile in Western Europe, food and material shortages have failed to materialise in the un un have failed to materialise in the unoccupied territories. Authorities urge citizens not to make runs on the banks, but instead show restraint so that the financial system can remain functional despite the ongoing conflict. It's a fair point. It's what caused, well, not exactly what caused the Wall Street crash, but it definitely attributed it. If you all panic and take your money out of the banks, then suddenly the financial infrastructure has, or that like that financial system has no way to dig itself out. Uh, banks are weird like that. Um, tactical situation. This is another mission that's come through at seven o'clock on the same day. Um, intelligence estimates indicate that enemy Spetsnaz commandos will land from submarine in the vicinity of Torschwan. Almost definitely fucking that up in the uh, whatever it is island. I want to say fair. The fair, is it the fairy island? The Faro? The Faro Islands. Um, they intend to report our sub movements and perhaps sabotage a naval base. You are ordered to intercept and eliminate them before they land. So they're going for Torshvan. Lovely. Oh dear. Primary objective: locate and sink the submarines transporting the commandos. And secondary objective is to locate and sink any escorting submarines. Avoid detection by enemy ASW patrols. And the rules of engagement are warning yellow. Weapons free on designated targets only. Okay, so we need to get down to the islands here. Torsh, Torsh, Torshaven. Torshaven? Torshaven? I don't know. Words. Thor Harbour in English. Interesting. I want to try and engage them in the deep water if I can. Here we go. Hopefully our ASW patrols in the air there are going to be able to stop them. Looks like it's this fucker breaking into the Norwegian Sea here. Right. Let's see how he does. We're just going to lie and wait for him and as soon as we pick him up as a contact we're going to intercept. Oh, hello. Denmark conquered. Soviet amphibious regiments have crushed opposition in Denmark, forcing the country to yield complete Warsaw Pact control. The Warsaw Pact offensive is pushing a severe strain on NATO forces. Analysts agree that NATO front lines may be dangerously close to breaking up. After a series of tactical successes in the Atlantic theater, the Soviet fleet is getting closer to its presumed objective of closing the NATO sea lanes. Allied current stockists in Europe are estimated to last a mere two weeks period of sustained fighting. Inability to replenish many quick many sorry may quickly put victory in Soviet hands. Interesting. I think this is our this is our guy. Let's intercept him. Okay, so it's a submarine. Captain, we have a new sonar contact bearing 337, designated as Sierra 1. Depth is 600 feet, bearing or heading, sorry, 265. Speed is 20 knots. Local conditions are clear and have a strong surface duct and thermal layer at 136 feet. Close to 20,000 yards. Rig ship for ultra quiet. Rigging ship for Passing silent running. 600 feet. Con, sonar, new contact, bearing, three, three, eight, designated Sierra, one. As we slow down here, we're going to be able to improve our target solution on Sierra 1 here. We know it's a submarine, so let's start that Con portion. Con sonar, Sierra 1 is classified as submerged submarine. I didn't want to mark it as a typhoon, but hey-ho. It's all right. Let's continue the TMA leg. Not a Charlie. Doesn't quite match the Charlie signatures. 
not a Victor One, not a Foxtrot, it's not a Romeo, but in whiskey class. Con Sonar, Sierra One is classified as submerged submarine. Not much dangerous of being spotted by this guy, even with him only being a mere 3.2 thousand yards. I'm pretty sure the close to range thing is enabled. Oh, dis uh, sorry, it's just broken. Like, this is definitely not 20,000 kilo yards from the target. It must be bugged or something. Solution is improving. The question is, does he have any escort ships? I'm willing to hedge bets on no, because we haven't detected them yet, unless they're in our baffles. Is he moving the same direction as us, or is he trying to move away? No, he's moving towards us. That's fine. We should be able to remain relatively undetected against his relatively weak passive sonar. There we go. He's increased to 5,500 yards. Okay. Let's turn in on him ever so slightly. Bearing 298, please, helm. Come right to 299. 299, helm I. Let's try and increase this TMA. This down here, the SOL, the solution, basically determines how accurate of a marker this is. At the moment, sonar is only 31% sure that's his location, which is usually means it's they basically don't know for sure. Difficult to say what speed he's running at as well. Can't know for sure. What's his depth? He's below the thermal layer, 300 feet. It's about right for a whiskey class. He can't go much deeper than that. Con, helm, steady course. Target solution is continuing to be a pain. It's not doing all that well. We're going to come right. We're going to try and get behind him. So, Helm, bring us right. Zero four seven. Come right to zero four seven. Helm, I. Jesus, how deep is the water? Total water depth is nineteen hundred feet. We can only go down to nine hundred and fifty. Solutions improving as we're now pointing the target and switching over to the ulterior sonar on the other side. Solution 44%. He's running at 11 knots. Background noise is 81 decibels, which isn't too bad. It's interesting that we're struggling to get a solution on him. 44% is pretty solid, and it's only going to improve. The idea is to get into his blind spot. I also found out that getting into a contact's baffles, even if they have a towed array, which this submarine doesn't, or his doesn't. Ah, hello, he's moving away from us. Come left to three, three, six, helm, I. He's going north. Interesting, he's just changed speed, 12 knots. Just watching to see what he does. He's up to 12 knots, sped up, and changed course. He's now moving away. I don't think we were detected, but we are in the contact's baffles, so we're going to fire a weapon onto him. 12 knots, I don't know. We should wait for the solution to improve before we fire on him. We need to be pretty much certain where he is. He's only at 5,000 yards, which isn't too bad, and he's not going to be able to outrun a Mark 48 for 15 minutes. So we can take our time with this one. We need to just ID the target and get a solid solution and make sure that he doesn't fire back at us. Con, helm, steady course. Once we get a solid sonar solution, we'll be good. 
You can see here we're in minus 50 and minus 50. We're right behind the target, which means there's no way that he can detect us if we shoot. Fifty three per cent target solution. Fifty four per cent. Starting to open a little bit of range on us. Again, if he gets to sort of ten thousand yards, then we'll have a, a little bit of a time tracking him. But I don't think he'll get that far. The solution's improving. Fifty-five. Let's fire one at him now that he's moving away. Then I can't ever. I can't see us being detected. But something spooked him. Maybe he's got a separate ship detecting for him that we haven't detected yet. Let's fire a weapon at him and see what he does. Firing point procedures on the bearing of Sierra 1. Range to, uh, sorry, bearing 331, range to enable 4,000 yards. Ship ready, tube ready, fire tube 2. Shoot tube 2. Aye, sir. Weapon has cleared the tube and is running normally. We will keep it as a passively homing warhead. As he's moving away from us, He shouldn't detect this until basically it's too late. There it is. Sonar solution is improving. 61%. What we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to bring the weapon out to the left here. And we're going to attack the whiskey from the side. So that if it fires its torpedoes, it's going to fire them down here instead of at me. So we're going to T-bone it if we can. Con sonar, launch transient from Sierra 1. Okay, there we go. He's fired his spread. We saw the launch transients on the map were about here, so we know exactly where he is now, despite the weak sonar solution. He is about there. I can click on that marker. There we go. About here. There we go, we can see the weapons coming in. But he's firing them at the wrong place. Helm, bring us right to 2023. Come right to 023. Helm, I. Oh no, the spread is on target. Okay. Belay that order. Dive, take us down. 950 feet. Take Meet us to crush depth. 950 feet, dive by. We need to get down under these weapons. Far under them. Point the target. Come left to three, two, nine. Helm, I. Increase your speed to say ten knots so that you don't lose him. We won't lose him. He's as good as dead. Right, we are now going to activate the homing warhead on the weapon. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. There we go, we are now tracking the target. He's fired a spread of two weapons in our direction. He called our bluff. But hopefully Con, we're going to be Helm, able to slip right under him. Fingers crossed. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing, three, two, eight. So this weapon's just gone active, and this weapon will go active very shortly as well. Con, fire control, weapon acquired. Weapon acquired, weapon is going to continue tracking the target. We should be deep enough for these torpedoes, enemy torpedoes, not to detect us. I can't imagine them being the really modern ones either, loaded into a whiskey class. These should sail right over us. Should. We should be okay. We'll listen out for the warning. So he's going sort of zigzag. He's going to get another countermeasure off before we get to him, I think. He's come to a dead stop. wonder why that is. Oh, there we go. It's updating. 
Still tracking the target. We'll leave it on passive homing just in case he has a teammate somewhere. Torpedo seems to think we're to know where he is. He's not dropped a second decoy. It's turning in on him. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra one. Last bearing three, two, four. Contact breaking up. Okay, reload mark 48 in tube two. Weapons are coming overhead as expected. They're searching too shallow. Con, dive <laughs> yeah. at 950 feet, dive by. The whales are working for the Soviets, exactly. There you go, you can see him sinking out out there. Bastard. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tempt fate with active sonar. Let's see if I get a return. Con sonar, switching to active search. We're now in sort of hunter-killer mode. We're trying to find any submarines that are out here. Can't hear any returns. I think that's it. Yep, okay. Can't hear any Con, other close contacts. Two, two, ready. There's that other submarine, the whiskey. Yeah, that's a whiskey, alright. Stabbed it right in the side with the Mark 48. It's a World War II design, so it's just basically just kaplunked basically and, and, and got killed so right then as we're deep enough we can silence Con the sonar. switching the passive search silence the active sonar I can bring it up to a head flank make turns for three three knots maneuvering eye it's great how quickly this ship accelerates 16 knots 17 knots 18 knots just like that with a top speed of 33, you can see the propellers going absolutely like the clappers, basically. For such a large submarine, pulling 33 knots is a hell of a speed. And we're literally just going to pull 33 knots to try and get away from Come the weapons. right to zero. Just one, so we two, can end the helm, game. I Con, helm, steady course. Hello Trilf, how you doing? Right. Just got to open distance on those weapons. Nope, they're still nearby. Let's speed up time then. Let's get very far away from them. The propeller is just a blur. Making turns for three, three knots. And that's far enough. Lovely. One times whiskey sunk and engaged. Excellent performance in locating and eliminating enemy submarines transporting Spetsnaz commandos. New orders transmitted on the downlink. Today's newspaper clipping. Red subs sunk. The Pentagon today has revealed that several Soviet submarines attempting an incursion near Torshvan, or Thor's Harbour or whatever it was, has been destroyed or driven off by coordinated efforts of NATO surface vessel submarines and aircraft. The continued cooperation of NATO members was cited as pivotal to the successful outcome of this operation. Ongoing protection of many of the NATO allied military installations throughout the theatre remains a high priority. NATO's ability to maintain control of the region is founded on these bases. Okay. Oh dear. Let me stretch my arms here. There we go, right. Intelligence reports that enemy that an enemy surface task force is preparing to sail from Murmansk for a patrol in the vicinity of the Norwegian coast. The warships are armed with long-range cruise missiles and will wreak havoc on vital, vital 
NATO supply convoys. You're ordered to intercept and destroy this task force. No other friendly units are in position to intercept in time. Locate and sink capital ships. Locate and sink any escorting warships if possible. So we've got a capital ship on site. So we're going to need to find them. So they're sailing from Murmansk. The Barents the Baren the Baren the Baren the Baren the Baren Sea is very well defended at the moment. You can see where the water gets shallow here just before we hit the Barents, so we're just going to hold just off the Norwegian coast here in the deep water, just north of Andoya, in an attempt to intercept as they close in. As I say, they're leaving from Murmansk, so they should be transiting this way now. This is likely the fleet here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Vandango, you're exactly right. Oh, yeah. There we go. Goop, goopsy, goop, goop whiz. Where was you? Wah, 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 wah. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers, man. Oh, for the fucking three, for the big one, the twenty-five ninety-nine or the twenty-four ninety-nine. Holy shit, mate! Thank you very much. Missed that. Wow. Cheers, bro. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Bob Marley. <Don't, laughs> right, um, Captain. We have a new sonar contact bearing one zero four, designated as Sierra One. XO reports that our depth is at 600 feet, heading 161. Our speed is 20 knots. Local conditions are calm and clear, bad for an attack. Strong surface duct and moderate thermal layer. We're going to close to 25,000 yards. Rig ship for ultra quiet. And rig ship for silent running. Range to the target is C, a mere 6,000 yards. Yeah. One, one, eight. Designated Sierra, two. There's some kind of dipping sonar up there as well. Con, Is there a thermal layer? It's strong. One, zero, six. Designated Sierra, three. Bring us down to 800 Except feet. Eight, zero, zero feet dive high. Water depth is going to be our friend here. We've got a torpedo that's just been launched. Take us down deeper. 900 Con, feet. Make depth nine, five, zero feet dive high. Ahead two thirds, please. Her maneuvering. Make turns for one, zero knots. Maneuvering eye. Take us all the way down. Take us to 1,000 feet, 50 Make feet past crush one, depth. Zero, zero, zero feet, dive high. Helm, bring us left bearing zero, 081. Come left to zero, 081. Helm, I. Two torpedoes coming in. Being pinged somewhere to our front. We are running very deep. That torpedo is searching deeper. Being pinged on active quite a bit. I'm hoping the water depth is going to be what keeps us in the game here. Con, helm, steady course. Steady course, I Don't want to be heading any deeper than this. This is as far down as I can get. Hopefully the water depth is going to shield me from the active sonar. Right. Rig ship for ultra quiet. Rig ship for silent running. Let's try and stay hidden down here. Okay, let's start identifying targets. So we know we've got surface contacts. We got a Udaloy up there. Not Con good. sonar Sierra One is classified as escort. Oh. It looks like we've got a Cresta 2, Con another big sonar. ship, Sierra or another good ship. Is classified as escort. We've got a Kirov, that'll be the capital. Con sonar, Sierra 3, is classified as capital ship. Con That's the capital ship, it looks like we've got some sonar. merchant Torpedo shipping. Torpedo in the water. Torpedo in the water. Bearing. One. Zero. Four. we got some Con civilian sonar. shipping up there. Sierra 4, is classified as merchant. Okay. Fire a MOSS in the direction of the fleet. Shoot to Con, sonar. Three. Torpedo in the water. Torpedo in the water. Bearing. One. Zero. Five. Right, we need to come ahead full. We've got no more MOSSs. Okay. Whoa! Fuck me, it obliterated us. Well, shit. Okay. It seems to be there's a bit of a bug with cold waters at the moment. Which is very annoying. 
because closing to 25,000 yards isn't actually closing to 25,000 yards. That, that put us at a mere 6,000 yards from our first tar target there. Kirov reporting, exactly. Um, well, shit, there's not much I can do about that. In, we were so deep then, past crush depth, that as soon as it pierced the hull, it, we literally popped like an egg. So that's a Los Angeles-class ship that has just been destroyed. Leave combat. They all escaped. We were killed by implosion. Yeah. Nuclear subs sunk. All the rest of it. And then the game's over. <laughs> well, that is annoying. Well, goddamn. All right. Was that crushed up? Yeah, rip. Rip indeed. See, that's the... Uh, oh, that's annoying. Part of the reason why I'm not a big fan of the LA class, it's much more difficult to try and do anything when you've got that particular problem. Like, we closed to the maximum range that it would let us. 25,000 yards. And we were in single digits away from our closest contact, which immediately detected us on passive sonar. We had a helicopter right on top of us that acted... Uh, sorry, pinged us with a sonar buoy and got our position. And then before we'd even fired a shot, before we'd even left silent running, we'd already got three torpedoes fired at us. I mean, how are we supposed to counter that? There's nothing. Literally, the, the very instant you are in the game, you are detected. Which basically ruins the whole idea of a submarine. If I was going to get detected instantly, I might as well have just taken a warship up there. Forget the whole submarine thing. God damn. Okay. Well, I'm happy to sort of start one more. Let's play another Fog of War run. And then I guess this time we play in the Narwhal. Can't really say otherwise. It's the only other one that we wanted to play. So, yeah, let's play in the Narwhal. This is a one-off design intended to take advantage of the very quiet natural circulation of the S5G power plant. It, this made it into one of the quietest boats until the emergence of the Sea Wolf in the mid-90s. The sonar and fire control equipment is the same as the Sturgeon class. Will you be swimming in the ocean, causing a commotion? I think that's the idea. Something, something, locomotion. Only pulls 25 knots, this ship. Okay. Hopefully, because this ship is much quieter, it will be a bit easier. I do like the Narwhal. I'd say it's one of my favourite ships. Okay. Tactical situation. Satellite recon has revealed an enemy raider group transiting at high speed towards the North Norwegian coast. We believe a small unrep force is operating in this area. You are ordered to interdink, 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 interdink this group and sink any replenishment ships in the area. You may also get a chance at the enemy warships this group intends to support, but the tenders and tankers are the mission target. Okay, right, let us just leave port straight away. I'm pretty sure we've got everything we could want. This ship is much slower. Uh, on the world map, being only able to pull 25 knots. By the way, hello from a lurker. Wake up, lurkers. Um, yeah, doing pretty good. Best game to watch you playing, in my humble and useless opinion. Thank you very much. He's very kind. So, the Soviets haven't really deployed in force yet, or the Warsaw Pact. They're coming around by the North Norwegian coast. I'm going to try and lie in wait for them just about here. There they are. So we're at the right depth. Close to 25,000 yards. Rig ship for ultra quiet. Rig ship for ultra quiet. It's nice and dark. We've got a new contact, Sierra 1, nothing else. Con, sonar, new contact, there we go, bearing Sierra two. Zero, 8, 4, designated Sierra 2. Okay. Con, sonar, new contact, Sierra come three. right to zero, 08, 4, helm I. So bring us up to PD, please. Make depth 4, 5, 8, dive by. Okay, so we're coming up to periscope depth. So Sierra 3 is bearing Con, 128. Dive four, five, eight, dive by. And Sierra 2 is 083. So 125. Race scope. Up scope. Low light. No close contacts as far as I can see. No, oh, hang on, we've got one there. Mark. We've got one just there. 
Mark, Master 3, Master 2, and Master 1 is somewhere in between, apparently. Right there. Nope, that's a helicopter. Master 1 is, as of this time, unknown. Con, helm, steady course. There's quite a fog bank over there. In fact, the fog bank's so thick, I've lost Master 3. Okay, drop scope. Down scope. Let's try and ID them. So, again, very quiet ship that we're driving here. We know there are at least some civilian shipping, or some merchant shipping out here, which I'd wager is this one here. Is it actual merchant shipping though? That's my only worry. Could be a submarine, actually. No, it's a civilian fishing trawler. Con Sonar, Master 3 is classified as merchant. So Master 3 is friendly. Difficult to say with that one. Okay, maneuvering. Drop the screws down to two knots. Let's try and improve. Make turns for two knots. Maneuvering eye. Let's see what shines out. So like we've got more civilian shipping. Master 4. Con sonar. Master 4 is classified as merchant. Okay. Master 1 is much louder. Let's look at... Con maneuvering, making turns for two knots. So we've got a Udeloy, that'll be what's pitting Con us. sonar, master one, is classified as escort. And we've got master two, whatever that is, it's coming right for us. A cannon. Con sonar, master two, is classified as escort. Let's check the other two identifications, because we're after a raider group, which means there should be replenishment ships here, but both Master 4 and Master 1 are considered friendly. Do any of these not match up? Pretty sure that line matches up perfectly. They all match up, even this one, even though it's distant. They all match up excellently. There are at least two warships there. Let me see here. Master 2 is 086. Let's scope. raise the scope again. 086. Low light mode. No visual on it at all. Apparently it's quite close to the cannon there, but... just be on its left. No visual at all. We could probably engage the cannon quite safely then. There's that helicopter. There's the Udeloy. No visual on the trawler. No other close contacts. Okay. The fishing trawler is out there. I just don't see it. Down, let's, go. let's fire on the bearing of Master 2 then. What we're going to want to do is wait for the helicopter to move off of its sonar buoy position before we fire. There's that helicopter. Hello, who's this? Get my bearings. That's the cannon. That's the Udeloy. Where's the heli? Sight on the heli. He's somewhere in here. Ah, hello. I heard something then. Was that a launch transient? Difficult to say what that is. It definitely looks like civilian shipping. We want to be careful of that. I'm not being pinged on active sonar. Although my detection threshold is quite high. No visual on the helicopter. Let's Down drop scope. scope. And let's fire on the cannon. So, firing point procedures. 
on the bearing of the cannon. I don't know how slow it thinks this weapon is. Um, yeah, okay, firing point procedures, bearing 094, range to enable 8,200 yards, ship ready, tube ready, fire tube 1. Ship tube 1, aye sir. Weapon away. They heard it. Two weapons coming in. Right. What we'll do is we'll change the enable point to there. We shall sever the weapon. No, we'll keep the weapon as best we can. Flood ballast, take us down, keep the nose up. Get ballast to take us down as far as we can. We need to sink, and in a big way. We need to get underneath these weapons that are coming in. They're going to land shortly. Give me five degrees negative planes. Passing 100 feet. Passing 100 feet, aye. They've launched them landing there. Curious. Keep taking us down, dive. I'm trying to keep the wire attached to the weapon so I can control it. Passing 200 feet. 200 feet, aye. Passing 300 feet. Let's hold here. So they fired two weapons, circular search. They think I'm about there. So they're quite far off. Looks like they haven't got a beat on me completely. Which is nice. The cannon can't detect me. And the Udloy can't detect me either. I'm too far out. So for the moment, I'm hidden. Weapon one, running to the target. Set this weapon to search shallow. Let's get it to activate now. Here we are. So the weapon's now running shallow. It should hopefully run right into the cannon's nose. We'll keep it on passive homing. And now that the weapon's reached its enable point, it has sped up, as you can see by the gap between the dots. I think it pulls about sort of 30 knots, 35 knots when it's in travel mode like that. And then when it speeds up, it reaches about 40 knots, 45 knots. So this weapon's now traveling a lot faster towards the target. At the expense of more fuel. We've got 15 minutes of fuel left in the weapon. There we go, it should find Con, the target. Fire control. Weapon acquired. There we go, weapon acquired. Let's see how he handles that. That Udloy is coming. But it's a very distant, faint signature now. That should just bonk the cannon right on the nose if it's running quiet enough. Cannon's making a hard turn, he's detected the torpedo. Let's send it active. go so it's now got active homing con fire control weapon countermeasure homing we're going to leave the weapon to acquire the target organically it's going to snake back around and reacquire him con fire control weapon acquired there you go these mark 48s are absolute bastards to shake this guy needs to be careful he's going to sink civilian shipping here Oh, they've fired a weapon out this way. Interesting. They've fired a weapon down here, which is curious. Oh, his ticket's punched. He's gone. He's made a tactical error here. That's going to find its mark. Nothing he can do about that. Con sonar, noisemaker, bearing uh, zero, 085. There we go. He's gone. Right, that just leaves the Udaloy. Bring us back up to about 200 feet, give or take. 
Bring us to 150 feet. Make depth 150 zero feet, dive I. Negative, bring us 100. Zero zero. Make depth 100 zero zero feet, dive I. Bring us back up above the thermal layer. Let's have a listen. Cool. Hold. Take us down. 500 feet. Make depth 500 zero zero feet, dive I. Right, emergency dive, take us down. Main turns for two. Con sonar, we are cavitating. That's Bear gonna find us. Con sonar, torpedo in the water, torpedo in the water. Bearing, zero, zero, one. Passing 500 feet. Con sonar, lost contact. Master, four. Passing 600 feet. Two torpedoes. Passing they want 700 dead. feet. Con, torpedo room, tube one ready. Passing 800 feet. Crush depth is about 1300 feet. Passing 900 feet. Con, sonar, torpedo in the water, torpedo in the water. Bearing, three, four, six. Reload an MOSS in tube four. Passing 1100 feet. We just gotta use some good old fashioned ingenuity here. Right, fire a decoy. Turn in on the weapon. Thirty degrees right rudder. Not ready for another decoy yet. Try and make a knuckle. Can't do it, we need to change depth and quickly. Bring us up 30 degrees left rudder. Passing Full rise on the ballast feet. tanks. Passing okay. 1100 feet. Back down, turn us in on the weapon. 30 degrees right rudder. Con, knuckle formed. Knuckle formed, we're now going fast enough to form knuckles at least. Passing 900 feet. Con, maneuvering. Making turns for two, five knots. Drop a decoy. Take us down, sink us with the decoy. Five degrees negative on the planes. 30 degrees right rudder. Passing 900 feet. We're just going to hook this decoy Con, for now. Torpedo room, tube four ready. There we go. Back Con, up. knuckle formed. 30 degrees. Right rudder. Passing 900 feet. Bring us up and over. Passing 800 feet. These are only the airdrop ones, so they're not too, they won't run Passing for too long. Passing 700 feet. And bring us down and under this one. Oh no, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. No. Shit. No. I um, misjudged the depth of that one. Well, bollocks. I'm clearly not having a very good day on cold waters. But you can see how it's much harder with these submarines. It's actually meant to be this hard, but the original mod breaks it. Um, the one that gives us all the extra submarines. We don't normally have this much trouble, but... Oh, here comes the other one. Are we... Uh, can we escape? No, we're well past uh, crush depth. They can't even hit us. Right then. Well, I guess that's about it for now then. Uh, I can't be asked to play anymore. So we got flooding aircraft. Yeah, pretty difficult, I'm afraid. So right, sunk by a UGMT-1 torpedo. Just like that. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that little bit of cold waters there. I don't know what I'm... In fact, the, tonight I'm actually at an awards evening um, for, uh, I think, my mum. Um, so I'm not going to be on tonight, but I should hopefully see you tomorrow. So thanks very much for coming and I will catch you next time. All right, <laughs> I think that's about it. I don't know who we can pass, uh, let's...
I don't know. I think with uh, I'd host someone, but you can find your own way, own way there. We've got Edberg, we've got Sai, and we've got Womble on. So yeah, take your pick. All right. Thanks very much, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.